Okay, this video is a teardown and a rebuild, complete rebuild, of an Autolite starter. This is off of a 1946 CJ2A Jeep, and the specific Autolite starter is an MZ4113. This is a 6 volt starter. So let's begin. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull the, the brushes and to do that there are springs holding each brush in. There are two brushes that are associated with the cap here and then, then two that are associated with the, the field coils down here and it's important to, to pull these out before we do anything else. So it's pretty simple. Uh, just lift up the spring And just pull these out. There's four of these brushes. Okay, next we're going to take this off. So there are four bolts. These starters cost about anywhere from $300 to $350, $60 rebuilt. I'm fortunate to have two of them, and I hope between the two I can make a one really good starter. All right. And I'm just going to pull the the Bendex and the everything here just straight out. There we go. Okay, next we're going to remove this cap here. Okay, so you can see again the, the two brushes here and the springs that hold them on. Springs are nice and tight. Brushes don't look that bad either. But these do. The insulation is worn off. And I think that's the problem with this starter is grounding out. Okay, I'm going to remove the field coils. Okay, next we're going to remove the, the studs here on the side to remove the field coils. These can be really tight at times. These I think are called the shoes. They hold the field coils in. Okay, next we need to move this nut. Threads are stripped a little bit, which is typical. Copper nuts. This is probably a leather washer right here. And there is, but I can tell right now it's missing. Yeah, that's a problem. It's missing an insulator. This should have a, an insulator so it, there's no chance of it rounding out and that's not good and likewise it's not soldered in so this 
an easy to take it out, which is nice, but it should have been soldered in. All copper. There's another leather washer on the inside. Okay, the fuel coil, coil should come out. So obviously they have a lot of oil and stuff on the insulators, some places where it's a little thin. It's obviously been used uh, a lot. My guess is these are original. Okay, I think the next step will be uh, I am going to get some paint remover and strip these off and get those uh, stripped and repainted. Okay, I want to explain a few more things uh, about this before we begin. The kit came with uh, two pairs of the field coils, so four coils total. Um, the, you know, each pair is joined together on the bottom. Um, however, we need to join these together more than this. And for, for one thing, there is a terminal stud, and I'll show that in more detail here uh, as we go. But the, the terminal stud uh, goes through the casing and, and joins here, and the kit didn't come with uh, a way to join that. So uh, here's the old one right here. Again, the terminal stud goes through here. Now I've already taken my soldering iron and heated this up and I was able to, to separate this. So we'll be uh, reusing this uh, for the new kit. And, and then secondly, please note this. This is still one, comes out as one piece. And, and the reason is, is there is there is an additional jumper that, that basically uh, you know, jumps the pairs of coils uh, together. And it's really important that you have that. Uh, now, here's another example. So here's a completely separate uh, set of uh, field coils. And, and likewise, it comes out as one unit, not two. And uh, on this particular one, they are jumped on the bottom here. But regardless, it, they have to be uh, jumpered together. And so the kit did not come with a jumper like what you see here. And I had some number four wire, which is incredibly thick. So I'm gonna create my own uh, jumper for the, the new kit. So let's get started.
Okay, we're going to begin by removing the Bendex gear and see if I could use most of the new one on this. Now, they, they come with this keeper that keeps the, the stud from coming out, so you need to take a screwdriver and just uh, bend that keeper down a little bit. And then these are our 5 8 I've already cracked this a little bit, so there we go. Notice that these are 180 degrees apart. The, the new one, they're both in the same side. I think this is a tighter spring. Um, this one is not quite as tight. Okay, that just comes right off. The spring actually is made that way, so 180 degrees from each other. I don't think it really matters. There's a little keyway right there that has to come out, and then you can take this apart as well. Okay, the keyway is actually buried in there. Uh, it takes a little bit of persuasion to get this off, but it, it will come if you just something in there to give it some leverage. I don't want to bend anything though. It's almost there. There we go. Okay, you can see the keyway right there. So that comes off. this in a safe spot. And that comes off as well. So I'm just going to clean up the parts here and then try to use as, as many of the newer parts as I can and put it back together. Okay, everything is cleaned up here. And in, in looking at this, I don't know exactly what you call this, a collar, a spacer, uh, but it's in, you know, like the center part of the starter. And it has a brass sleeve in it, and the one that's in there is is scored. You can feel some ridges in it. Also, as I place this in here, you notice that there's a lot of slop there. And that cannot be good. You want this to be uh, pretty snug. Now, the kit came with extra sleeves, bushings, whatever they're called, brass. And, and these fit in there. I think it's actually this taller one that's the right one to fit in there. So what I'm going to do is find a socket that's uh, the same diameter and I'm going to find a way to, to tap the old one out, uh, put a little bit of grease on the outside of this one and, and tap this one in. Okay, I found that just a simple 3 8 inch drive extender uh, works well. It's a little bit uh, narrow on the bottom uh, but uh, where, it, where it tapers here, it's just perfect. And I can just be able to drive that straight through. Okay, there it is. There's the old one. Okay, the new one I put in place, and I'm going to tap it in the same way I tapped the old one out. Okay, there we go. This is 320 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to sand it up a little bit, the contacts and, and also the, whatever that's called, the housing. Okay, it's time to put it together. 
Now with the kit, I'm not going to be able to use quite a bit of these parts. In, in fact, uh, just this whole front section I can't use anyway. But uh, other parts too, this is a little bit different design, the original one. Uh, fortunately, ha I have another starter that's exactly like this one, except it has the extra spline in it. So between the two starters, I'll use most of the parts. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for, for this one, uh, there's just a handful of parts that I'll be able to use. Okay, that's nice and firm. It's going to work a lot better. Okay, I've got to find the keyway. There it is. Line up the keyway here. And I'll have to tap that down. Lining up the hole. Hey, there it is. So there's two different studs here. One has a point on it, the other one doesn't. The one with the point goes in here. I think it's a 5 eighths. I didn't show it in the video, but I, I tightened both uh, bolts here as tight as I could, and the keepers are on there. And so what we do now is simply pull the, the keepers tight against the the stud head. Alrighty, set that aside. Okay, it's about time to put the, the field coils uh, into the, the field housing and the field shoes and the terminal stud in there. Now, one of the biggest problems with starters not working or is they short out. And there are some places here on the field housing that this is basically the, the ground that I want to make sure are insulated. And I just have uh, some, uh, this is PVC tape. It's 20 mils, very thick. And I'm just going to cut it in two. And the places I know are at risk for grounding out, I am just going to put some of this in place before I put the field coils in. And I'm just going to cut this in half, roughly.
Okay, it's not the prettiest solder job here, but everything is soldered uh, securely. It's very important. And I'm going to put it in place. All right, let's get the shoes in place. Now the shoes are just iron. Uh, they're they're not magnets, but they turn into magnets with the field coils around them. They're, they're very thick, and you just have to, those four of them, just put them in place. And there are studs here, very substantial ones. I'm just going to just finger, put it in finger tight for now, but I'll be tightening them substantially here in a few minutes. I don't want them tight now though. Not yet. Next, I'm going to put the terminal stud in place. Okay, this is a terminal stud kit. I got this at Kaiser Willys Jeep. It's about 17 bucks. It's expensive, but all the parts here are very important. They're, they're hard to find. And, and basically, you want to insulate the, the terminal stud from the, the housing here. And now I bought two kits. I'm actually building two starters here. Uh, so, exact same kit here, and you know, these washers are non-metal, that's neoprene, and you want to sandwich this, you don't want this touching the, the case at all, and so I'm going to slide the first washer in place. Now this little insert fits exactly in here. That has to go in there. And then with this as well, so here's the, the stud and you want to push it on the inside. And it's designed to Go right between those. You can see that like that. Now again, it's important that these not be be touching at all, and I'm, I'm sure it's not. It's well insulated now. And then on this side, you want it to be straight. straighten up as I tighten it here. So another neoprene washer here, the first one. So a neoprene washer, first nut, the, the, the standard washer, and then when you have your cable that, that, that comes in here, it'll go on here, and then your lock washer, and then the final stud, final, uh, final nut, excuse me. Okay, now this has to be tightened, and I should straighten it up as I do so. Half inch.
You want it nice and snug because it, it pulls in, you know, makes contact there. I could also solder it on the inside as well, but I am confident this is very tight and secure. Okay, now I'm going to tighten the field shoe studs more, and this will not be the final tightening. These really have to be cinched in very tight, otherwise uh, you have the armature dragging against it as it spins. Okay, I'm going to use my Cobalt a Mini Multimeter Reader and I'm going to check and, and just make sure that uh, it's, it's not uh, grounding out. And, and so the casing is the, the negative, you know, what comes in with the terminal stud is, will be positive. And so as I touch, oh, I have this set to this setting, so it's just on uh, this setting. So um, when you touch these together, It'll do that and go to zero and it shows uh, continuity. So if there's any, con you don't want continuity in this case. So I'm going to touch the, the inside of the case here uh, to the stud. And in this case, um, it uh, someplace it's touching. So it's probably like right here. Or actually right here these brushes when you check it you have to make sure they're they're out of the way so let's let's try it again I'll put the, the meter perhaps so where you can read it as well so we don't want it to do anything so again there's a stud okay there we go it's not doing anything that means that, that it won't ground out I'll, I'll, I'll be showing you some other tests here too on the multi a meter and as we look in here, just want to make sure everything is out of the way. So you know, so it's always a little bit tight here, but the the, the way this is designed is that uh, it actually tapers down on each end, and that's the end that will stick up here, and we, we should be good. Okay, next we need to mate everything together. Sometimes it's better to put this end on here first, but. Um, I'm going to try this way first. So I'll put the armature in. It's a tight fit, but it should just go right in. There it is. Okay, now this uh, end piece here. There's a, there's a notch right there. Not a notch, but it's a peg that goes in. A little 90. And you have to line that up with that notch right there. There it is. No. Line this up. Now these bolts.
Okay, uh, I'm going to use the multimeter again, just to make sure that nothing is grounding out. So the positive comes in to the, through the terminal, um, it, it'll go out through these, lead, these brushes, and <clears throat> this is the, the negative, this whole part here is, is the negative. So again, I don't want um, where the positive comes in to ground out, and it doesn't. That's good. Now, um, with these brushes, uh, same thing. Okay, that's good. Okay, looks good. You can also do an ohm reading on, on all these contact points and it should have the same reading on, on each one. I did that earlier, just didn't record it. Okay, it's time now to put the, the brush cap on. Now, I did not replace the, the brushes that were on here. They were in really good shape, so I left them there. These, these are replaced here. On the second starter I'm, I'm rebuilding, it's just the opposite, so again, I can use all the parts. Now, the, the, the bushing in here I did not replace. I don't know really how to do that. If I takes a puller, I don't have that, and it didn't, the, the, it didn't come in the kit. This is a little bit of a different size. So... <clears throat> What I'm going to do here is position, this will be the, the ground that's grounding it to the, the engine block. And I kind of want that on the opposite side of the, the stud or kind of at a uh, V shape. So I kind of want this down here. Um, so I'm just going to position it like so. Pull the brushes through like that. Okay, I'm just going to put the little screws in. Time now to, to seat the brushes. To seat the brushes, you just pull the spring back with a pick. Just like that. To make sure the, the line is pulled away from the armature. Okay, and the insulated lead away from the armature, and, and all of these really, but two are insulated, two are not. There we go, that one was easy. Okay, we're almost ready for the moment of truth to, to see how well this runs, if at all. I'm sure it will. I, I love how it, it spins. I can do it by hand. If you, if you cannot spin it by hand, then there's, there's something wrong. There's impingement. That's not the case here. Nice and smooth. The brushes look good. I have it strapped down on the table. I have some jumper cables in place. So this is the, the ground, the negative, and I have a six-volt battery on the ground here. Now, as far as the positive side, the terminal stud, 
I didn't want to just take some jumper cables and clamp it on the, the stud itself and mess up the thread. So I have a, a lead here. So let's, let's see how well it runs. All right, very well. There's only one thing left to do, and that's to put this back on, and we will wrap up this project. All right, here it is, a fully restored and rebuilt starter off a 1946 Willys CJ2A Jeep. It's hard to believe that this starter and the Jeep are 76 years old, quite amazing. It looks beautiful, it runs strong. If you got any value at all from this video, please give me a like, it costs you nothing, but it's a great value to me. If you wanna watch more videos on the Jeep project, the 1946 Willys CJ2A, please watch the videos here at the end. And as usual, have a great day. Peace.